教えて教えてよスノー。Okay, I'll stop. Tokyo Go. It deserves a remake. Studio Pair did this show dirty, just completely destroying it. Okay, now I know some of you guys don't actually know what Tokyo Go is about, or you have heard about it before through a song, or you could have watched it before but have completely forgotten about it, like me. And I'm not gonna sit here for like 10 or more minutes to explain to you guys what the first season is about, which is the only good season, by the way, the only season that doesn't need a remake at all. Season one made this show a legendary show even until this day. So in order to save you guys some time, so I'm just gonna speed run through the first season, but don't worry, it's gonna be super detailed and accurate. Just trust me. Ready? Wait, hold on. On a warm sunny day, Kaneki was feeling a little horny on that certain day. And he was just chilling with his old buddy pal Hide. And a beautiful purple air girl was just hunting for some meat that day. Totally not suspicious at all. She caught his attention and they went out. The next thing you know, it turns out she was a ghoul. Shocker. But plot saves Kaneki and after he wakes up from the hospital, he finds out that he's a ghoul because he can't consume the old McDonald's. I don't know, maybe the burger was raw. Have you thought about that? It's fucking raw! Yeah, yada, he went out on the street, finds some suspicious alleyway, walks down the alleyway, gets beaten up by a ghoul, then meets up with a blue haired girl named Toka. She brings him to the coffee place, he meets the people down at the coffee place that treats him like family. Then he meets a horny cheating teacher, meets a gay horny pedophile who probably wants to do the dirty with Kaneki. I don't know how Kaneki doesn't see the 1000 red flag when talking to him. I can 100% understand if it was for Rize, cause you know she's hot and she got titties. But Kaneki isn't gay, so why trust this dude? Then he meets the ghoul exterminator, then meets a guy with a a mask named Jason, totally not a ripoff at all. Gets kidnapped by Jason, gets tortured really badly. Jesus Christ, leave his fingernails alone. When he's getting tortured, he gets asked a super hard quantum mechanics, Riemann hypothesis question, what is 1000 minus 7? What is 1000 minus 7? I don't know, I don't know. He couldn't answer it, of course, meets Rize, and Rize turns this kid into a man. Now, actually, he just turns into this super edgy dude with white hair and black fingernails. Destroys Jason, asks him what 1000 minus 7 is. Jason couldn't answer it of course, and Kaneki just eats him. That's it. So you guys understand the recap of the first season? No. Okay, so after Kaneki joins our Gary Trey, I think this was the beginning of the fall for Tokyo Goal from the start of Tokyo Goal Route A. Just think about this. With the newfound power that Kaneki has, he decides to join our Gary Trey, which is the organization that Jason came from, which is also the enemy of the cafe that he used to work at. Bro, this ain't making no sense. For some reason, I don't know who had the stupid idea to make the anime go a different route from the manga route. Route A was the anime, which is not canon at all. I don't know what these people were working at the office was thinking at the time when they decided to go a different route from the manga route and then making it official as the next season. If Tokyo Go were made out Gear Tree as a side story arc or something like that and just continue with the manga, I think Tokyo Go was gonna be like Death Note or one of the legendary anime that people will never stop talking about. Without following the author's writing and going on your own way with no passion or proper idea for the show, will make the show become an absolute mess, nothing is gonna make sense, and that's exactly what happened. The only accurate part for Route A was at the end of the season where Kaneki was carrying Hide through the snow. Man, this show is so edgy. Season 2 was just so messy and nothing really made sense because they decided to put a non-canon story into the main story. The only redeeming factor was the OST, which is literally my favorite OST. Just literally listen to this. Glassy sky. It's like one of the greatest anime OST of all time in my opinion. Then we get into Tokyo Go Re. Now they decide to get into the main story which is the manga route of the story but at this point it's already too late. Nobody really understands anything because of what happened in Route A. I swear when I started Tokyo Go Re season 1 after finishing Route A I was just so confused of what the fuck was actually happening. Who is this guy? Where are all his original friends? Who are these people? Why does this guy look like a softer version of Kaneki? So soft. Why is this guy meeting Kaneki? Did he take him on a date and some pipeline fall on Kaneki? Honestly from the start Re, what they should have done is give us one or two episode recap of what happened between Arima and Kaneki. Re would have made a lot more sense if they just showed what happened between him and Arima. And some people could have connected the dot what was happening in the story without having to read the manga. But I gotta admit, Re season 1 wasn't that bad. I know, I know, Re is bad, but it's not as bad as the other seasons. Not better than season 1, of course, but if you have just read the manga like I have, Re really isn't that bad. If you just take away the part where nothing really makes sense, there are some great moments like when Kaneki comes back, cracks his finger, activates his Kagane, and starts fucking shit up. Pretty much every interaction between Kaneki and Heisei is pretty interesting. And you actually pay close attention, you can actually figure it out that Heisei is actually Kaneki. The overall animation was pretty good as well. The fight scenes was nicely animated, it captured a lot of great moments and angles. And speak out angles. Bruh, Nutcracker made this season for me. God damn, she can crush my nutsack any day of the week. Please, please step on me and crush my...
It remade like four to five OVA episodes of recap what happened in the manga route, and then adding one or two more episodes of what happened between Arima and Kaneki on that snow day before starting the main show. I think it wouldn't have been as bad because re season one delivers on most of everything that Tokyo Ghoul should deliver on. Their super edginess, the ghoul hunters are incompetent as usual. It consistently has great animations. Kaneki keeps changing his hair every few minutes, and most importantly, Kaneki be looking hot AF. My favorite moment of all of Tokyo Ghoul was from re season one. When Kaneki comes back and became this super edgy dude who says shut up in a hot way and then claps Eto with no problem at all. Tokyo Ghoul Re Season 1 is still pretty bad, but it's not as bad as the final season. The messy storyline and having no good music in there just ruins the season for me. That's about it. Tokyo Ghoul Re Part 2. This is without a doubt the worst season of Tokyo Ghoul. I don't care what anybody says. First, I just wanted to ask, who in their right mind allowed this? This to be in the cover of the final season. This legit looks like an X-Arm cover. It looks so bootleg and budgeted. I'm not kidding with you guys. When I saw this cover, I legit thought that this was just some random terrible anime that just got released. I'm sorry, but who drew this and who allowed this to be published as the cover of one of the greatest anime of all time? This does not look like Tokyo Ghoul at all, but whatever. Let's just forget about the cover. Once you get into the actual anime, it's completely god awful. I don't know what happened with Studio Parrot, but Tokyo Ghoul's re season two and pretty much everything about it just got way worse. They even did my boy Arima dirty. To be honest with you guys, the Kaneki and Arima fight was the only thing I was looking forward to for this mess of an anime, and they ruined the most important fight of the show. I mean, just look at this animation. What is this? This is not an animation this is a png an image if done correctly this is the best showdown of the show screw this weird guy who has an obsession with the purple hair pedal and yes rize is a pedal she literally went out with kaneki let's not lie screw the jason ribbon fight screw the eto fight this was supposed to be the best fight for the show and it was probably the most hyped up fight as well this was it this is the showdown and the only thing they showed was png back to back of the fight and where's the new godly ost at i would expect this fight to have a godly ost playing in the background one of the things i really enjoy about tokyo go and what made the show is the music. Most people know Tokyo Go from the music and this season was honestly the most important season and they didn't have it. I can't even blame Arma for taking himself out of the show. I wouldn't want this disrespect either. And after the Arma fight, everything just got worse from there. The story was just completely rushed out even more than before. Half of the animation feels like a total PNG. Kaneki finally did the dirty with Toka, which I have so many questions about. How did she get pregnant so fast? Why is the sex scene a PowerPoint presentation? How much is Kaneki packing? I mean, what's the point of showing this scene? I know it's in the manga. Okay, I know, I know. I, this scene's in the manga. But there's many other important things that needs to be covered from the manga as well. That the anime didn't cover. And you use this screen time to show Kaneki and Toka doing the dirty? Like, bro, this isn't some sort of hentai or dark anime. It's a fighting show. If they would have done a better job of the pacing of the story, okay, I'll give them that. Or if this is like in a filler OVA episodes, yeah, I can understand. But no, the pacing is a mess. The whole story of the show is a mess. So why do it? Why take up the screen time? We already know Kaneki and Toka is gonna fuck, okay? We already know that. The ending of the show shows us that they have a kid. You don't need to show them doing the dirty. And finally, we have the final fight between Kaneki and this psychopath dude. Everything about this fight was boring and clunky. I couldn't think of anything that was remotely good about this fight, because literally half of it was just images and maybe gifts. Maybe Kaneki's final Kagane was pretty cool, but that's about it. Everything in this fight felt really rushed out. Every important moment felt really rushed out as well. They also gave this dude a dumb reason on why he became a supervillain. And if you guys want to know, it's because he didn't get any Gucci from Rize. That's about it. Rize is his childhood friend but she didn't really like him she likes Kaneki instead so he turns into a bad guy and he wanted to be part Rize as well which is even weirder because he literally attached her Kagane to himself Tokyo Go Re season 2 was just a complete hot mess there was just too many images for me to stare at too many things that didn't get explained a lot of time was wasted on pointless scenes I mean dude you're just gonna waste time at least give us some fan service the only thing that was good was the opening I'm not talking about the animation in the opening I'm talking about the actual song from the artist Tokyo Go after season 1 is a complete redo except for the opening music all of it was fire and they're gonna do a reboot one day there are three things that i think that needs to be done they have to follow the manga's route and pacing there needs to be good animation not pngs for us to look at and most importantly there needs to be more fire songs for us to listen to if they follow these three things tokyo gold would 100 percent be a lot lot better because there's a lot of monetizable game that could come out with it and let's be honest money is the most important part and it's the reason why we have anime to watch nowadays tokyo gold is still very popular and it has a lot 
of potential. If they decide to do a reboot and do everything right, it would sell like crazy. If Tokyo Go comes back, it's gonna be the most hyped up show for that season. Tokyo Go and maybe The Seven Deadly Sin is the only show I can think of for a reboot to be possible. I don't think any other show can actually do it without losing money. A redo for this show would be incredible and if Tokyo Go is gonna come back, the most important thing that they have to bring back is... Oh, she Oh, she yo, Suno.